Hi, one Sal. Um, I've been asked uh, about what tools uh, plumbers use mainly, or what tools I use anyway, uh, day to day to do a bit of plumbing with. Now, I brought a few up with me, not everything, because um, there is lots more actually, but I brought up sort of a general kind of toolkit for you to have a look at to see the kind of tools you may need uh, for whatever jobs you want to take on if you're going to do some plumbing. Certainly, if you're going to take up plumbing for a career, um, you'll definitely need this amount here um, that I've got here, but um, we'll go through it and I'll just show you what I've got and then you can make your own mind up as to what tools uh, would, would suit you. So first of all, I'll bring it down to the main toolbox, which is everybody's piece of kit, um, and I've got a couple of little canopy little sections on here, and you can see that on, on this side, um, I've got a few fittings, washers in there, a um, few couplings, an emergency valve in case I need to shut something off, uh, and there's even an end fit push cap there if I want to blank a pipe off uh, in a hurry. I've even got a type of washer penny job in there that seals off a Conex fitting if needs be. And they're just sort of like emergency crew really, olives, uh, free 22mm and 15mm, um, and uh, even a push fit coupling for emergency. Uh, they're just kind of stay fast tools really that I, I keep there in fittings just in case something happens. Bag of washers of all sorts in there, fits all type of things. Get those for a pound in any of those cheap shops, very handy indeed. Okay, so that's, that's that little compartment. Again, in this one here, uh, I've got another bag of washers and stuff there. Tiny spanner for do a drain off cock. Uh, spare loops for cisterns. Uh, spare horseshoe there um, for the back of taps in case it breaks off. Um, Allen, a key for radiator valves. Uh, spare bolt for the back of bottoms of taps. So just generally a bit more kit, um, a few other bits and pieces in there, there's even a, a nice high quality tip for screwdriver. They're yeah, just general bits and pieces kept for emergency sake. They've got to be settled in right then that, that lid will pop back on. Over that side, um, we've got, because I've got shut here properly, over this side we've got uh, pencil sharpener, sounds mad. Keep your pencil sharp when you're marking items. That spanner fits the drain cock, the little tiny ones. Again, some extra screwdriver bits. Blades for the Stanley knife. A few bits of copper pipe, just short bits that are good for fitting on uh, when you need a short stubby end. Just general good, good piece of equipment. Uh, and this end, again, I don't carry many screws because um, I like to keep another box. I've got a completely separate box for screws of every size you can get, you know. I generally recommend screw fix or someone for that. I do carry a few odds ones in there, but generally I'll carry a separate box for screws. Again, just general bits and pieces that, you know, can be very handy. You know, there's even a rad blanking valve there. And, uh, you know, there's even a, what's that, you know, might say that's a three quarter or bath tap receiver. You know, just, just general bits and pieces or don't wash it for bath taps etc etc even a seat bolt there doing up a plastic toilet seat now just general items you pick up over the years these again very invaluable uh, that is a straight swivel washer goes on the end of a tap so if you've got a tap you know that the washer's gone it's leaking on the pipe work underneath you can drop one of those on and uh, that will seal that up so just generally bits and pieces even things there to fix pictures up with <laughs> if you need them anyway that's that's that well, I'll just show you generally the main kit now inside the box. And there's a tray here. This is my main tray. Um, and as you can see, it's things like invaluable items like a junior axe or sets of screwdrivers with posi ends and ordinary ends, PTFE tape, measure, pipe cutter, um, just general gear. Um, this is an actual an olive puller, very useful. Pulls olives off of pipes when they're jammed on, things like that. You know, the most useful spanner in this entire box is this one. And I'll tell you why, because it's short and stubby and it fits in corners tight like no others. I would say out of all the tools, this thing that cost a mere four quid in one of those cheap shops 10 years ago is still going strong. And you can still take this out, that jaw right out, like that, and turn it around the other way. And you can see it's got a teeth, teeth on there. Put it up that way and it becomes a, almost like a pair of Stilsons. It will grip pipes. It's very, very handy. So if you see one of these around, I think you can get them easier now. Um, because look at the width of that jaw. You can't get a width like that on a stubby tool like that normally. You know, that is it's just fantastic. I use that probably the most of the rest of the kit. I mean, there's an ordinary spanner. If I show you that one, um, it's only going to pull out 
to there, the end of there, that's it, that's his width. Yes, yeah, got longer and more pull, but not as flexible as that one there. These two, very handy. Okay, they're, they're really good for getting under taps because they're nice and thin. You can get under tap collars and get them undone. Uh, so I really like these. These are, these are often used. Um, the rest is common sense stuff, you can see. And I think as well, the other most important piece of kit is these. Uh, they're called footprints. Um, you just take the nut out there and adjust them up and down as you want. So you can put it in anywhere you like and get the width adjusted. The thing with these is as you go to do up a nut, you push on the back of that like that and you force the grips onto the nut. So as well as turning the nut, you're also putting pressure on it and keeping it clamped together. An absolute must pair of footprints. Take the toolbox off now. Have a look what's underneath. It's the heavier gear, I suppose. I still use hemp. Old fashioned, I know, but I like it on threads. Um, plumber's blue, um, universal jointing compound for all, for all types of pipe work. Um, down the bottom here, most necessary obviously is a hammer, a couple of mini screwdrivers, and another must have tool base and spanner. You know, if you're going to do taps, you've absolutely had it if you've not got one of these. Right, that is a, an absolute muster. Uh, pair of Stilsons. You know, for the heavy work, if the sink is a bit heavier, you will need those to undo pipes. Uh, so it's just a general fair bit of kit there. You know, one of these little Stanleys uh, for cutting through stuff. Um, what else have we got down here? Little box of screws for emergencies, bits of odd ends of pipes, file, pliers, and a small level. So that's about my basic kind of kit sorted out. So, that I would say is your basic, you know, if that was what you, you, you if you wanted to go out and do a little bit of plumbing, you would need all that. All right, so that, that is the basic here. So, but we're gonna move on because um, I brought up a few other bits. Now, if I take you over this side, um, if you're gonna do soldering copper pipes, uh, you're gonna put in some new pipe, well, you're gonna need this gear here. Um, well, you don't have to have, you can use a file, you know, but here's a pipe cleaner and reamer goes on the pipe work, cleans the inside of the fittings and cleans the outside of the pipes. Very cheap, only a few quid. Well that there you are, £1.79. Very handy. Uh, this thing, very good again, does like that, goes inside of a pipe fitting, twists around like that and cleans the pipe fitting out. This one reams the end off, um, it's got a sharp teeth in there, you put it on and it reams the inside of a pipe, makes it nice and smooth for put the pipe on. Um, flux to put on the joints and heat cloth that is all standing on so you don't burn any furniture or burn any wallpaper um, when you're doing a burning and obviously a gas bowl which we've got there. I've got a big gas bowl because you should do lots of it um, but you can get little small containers with a little blowtorch if you're only doing a little bit, you don't need a big bowl like that. Okay, moving around, obviously a drill. I've just brought up one of my drills, but I've actually got three or four. Um, this is just my little Bosch. Um, you need drill bits of both types. Okay, metal twist and obviously masonry. Um, so that's that. Now moving around to the front. If, um, if you don't want to use a pipe bender like this, because they are a bit weighty and heavy to move around, this is a full bore pipe bender, 15 mil. 22 mil. Um, if you don't want a carbon a little bit of cheap weight, you can get a spring like this, a bending spring, you put it inside the pipe and you bend it on your knee. Okay, just put it around, bend it, and it does get around, but be careful of creasing the pipe if you want to do that. These are only a couple of quid, the bending machine is about 50 quid, so you can take your choice on that one. Sometimes I don't take that if I've only got a little bit of bending to do and use the spring. Alright, obviously the level and another important thing, this, which is a uh, Obviously stopcock key. Sometimes them stopcocks are too far down, you can't get them off if you're out on the road. You need one of these to turn the water off. Okay, so that's a general stopcock key. Um, move along. What else we got? Um, <coughs> this thing. Um, this looks like a load of rubbish, I know, but it's covered with uh, plumber's mate rubbing, you know. But it's actually a pressure gun, and if you've got blocked sinks, you get called around to clean those. I used to get hundreds of them. This would be a, a quick and easy way of clearing them out. You pump this, like so. Put that nozzle over the sink waste, or the basin waste, or the bath waste, and pull the trigger. And you'll see a jet of air comes out of here. That jet of air generally clears a block waste. 
Not every time, but nine times out of ten, that will clear a little block for you, to save you a hell of a lot of time and trouble. And they're only about twenty quid. Okay, so that if you're going out doing plumbing all the time, is a nice little tool that I use a lot. All right, other little tools I've got on the end of here. Um, this is a, another type of basin spanner, if you like, uh, but it's universal. Takes loads of different size nuts, and it's useful getting up on the back of nuts under sinks where you can't get a basin spanner. You can get one of these up there and turn the nut and undo it. All right, that's very handy. Um, tap receipting tool. If you live in a hard water area, uh, if you're around the London area, um, or Kent, you've got chalky hard water. The taps will need grinding out. Okay, very, invariably, it's not the tap washer a lot of times. There's a cut in the seat of the tap uh, and it will need grinding flat with one of these. So I live in the southwest now, so I don't use this anymore because <laughs> we don't get any cut seats. If you've got soft water, you won't need it. Virtually, I would say, but if you live in a hard water area, you'll need one of these if you're doing taps, okay? Uh, last but not least, um, this. If you're doing immersion eater, if you do a lot of immersions, uh, this is the one tool for getting them out. It's, it's a monument, okay? It's an immersion eater spanner. There's the code of it. And uh, if you want to get immersions out, this is the boy. Um, now, you see it's not long, and it, it's because it's, it's the way it's built is heavily built. You put this on the immersion, um, and you shock it by hitting it with a hammer. You hit the handle with a hammer like this and it shocks the immersion and undoes it. Okay, I don't think any other tool can get them out. You try Stilson's, you could rip the top of the cylinder off. This is the tool if you're doing immersion eaters, believe me. I've used it for years, well, the last 40. <laughs> so I do know um, the boy for immersion eaters. But anyway, that's, that's a general roundup of tools. You won't need all this if you're just doing a, a job at home, a simple little job. You may need just the tools I've mentioned in the main toolbox. Um, but I haven't brought everything up. I've still got another load of stuff downstairs, but that is for really large jobs where I'm dropping on maybe a, uh, a building site and doing everything from scratch. Um, obviously, I've got saws and all sorts of things down there, electric saws and all that kind of gear. Um, but that's only if you, you know, you're, you're like me, been a plumber so many years, you carry all this gear. But basically, that's my day-to-day -day stuff. Um, so really, I've been asked about it, and I thought I'd bring it up so you could see what kind of stuff you need. And uh, you know, if you're going to do a bit of plumbing, have a go. I've got loads of videos on uh, YouTube there, uh, and on my website as well, derren33.com. And there's a lot of stuff there for all kind of plumbing jobs. Um, so rather than call a plumber, save yourself some money and have a go. All right, <laughs> nothing to lose. At the end of the day, if you can't do it, you still can call a plumber in. All right, um, there's nothing wrong if you don't don't succeed. Have a go. All right, that's it then for me. Uh, all my videos, you know where to go. All right, bye bye.